back with another video folks where we're going to be taking a look at the 3D block prop set from PixaPro. Now these are designed to visually enhance your product photography and if like me in the past you've had to make your own or have somebody else make them for you now you can actually buy them from the PixaPro website. Links will be in the description below if you want to head over and check those out. So we're going to kick this first video off with a simple setup. Now I will be producing a couple of more videos using the block prop sets, using vibrant colours, using the GA17 backdrops from PixaPro and having a few different setups to hopefully give you guys an idea of how you could use them in your product photography. So we're going to kick it off with the first video and we're going to keep it super simple. I'm using two blocks from the pack. Now the idea behind this shot is just to create nice different shades of whites and greys and darks to enhance this plain lipstick that's sitting on top of the box and how we're going to do that is we're going to light it from the back with a Pika 200 sitting in an easy open octobox in front of that I have some tracing paper which is going to just diffuse that light a little bit more I'm restricted with space in here so I don't have the luxury of setting up big soft boxes so this is going to work just fine and what you're going to see is obviously the light is going to be bright at the back and it's as it falls away it's obviously going to come into darkness giving us different shades of grey and white coming across the blocks so we'll take a test shot and i'll show you that i'll pop them up on screen so you can see what i'm talking about so as you can see there obviously it's later at the back like i said and obviously it's getting different shades of grey coming around the box which is exactly what we want now the other thought i had was to add some sort of strip of light to enhance the look of the lipstick and really make a pop in the image and to do that i'm going to be using the city 600 which has attached to it the optical snoot from pixel pro and in this optical snoot i'm using the slit gobo now if you haven't seen this product i'll pop a link to a card above you can go and check that out and um, there's a full review on that on the website which is the fantastic product just allows you to really get creative with all your products and your portraits so i'd highly recommend you go and check that out so we'll switch this on and I'll take a shot so you guys can see. Now normally I don't have the video lights on so I would be able to visually see where that light has fallen so I'm kind of going to have to guess a little bit to see where it's going to land. So we'll take a shot and see if we're, see if we're lucky enough to get it in the right place the first time. Let's have a look at that. That's not bad at all. But it needs to come this way and fall that way. And that's it there so as you can see from that shot there obviously we've got a nice strip of light and it's running straight down the center of the lipstick and that looks really good now the next thing we need to do we've got the different color shades of gray we've got that nice light coming in what i want to do is obviously add a little bit of three dimensionality to this plain black block of lipstick now again i'm restricted for space in such a small studio shooting space so what i tend to do is i use a lot of speed lights and I've come up with an idea of using diffusing panels that I've made from the tracing paper from behind. So what we'll do is I'll put that in situ. Obviously, you guys won't be able to see the product, but you'll get the idea when I pop the uh, pop it up on screen. And what that's going to do is give me a nice, slightly graduated light coming down the side of the product. So if I take a shot there, you can see that's giving me a lovely little light coming down. That just adds, gives it a bit more three dimensionality to the actual lipstick sitting on top of the block. Now I do want another one on the other side, so what I'm going to do is add a mirror to that side, and I'm going to get another uh, reflection of this light coming through the diffusion panels on the opposite side of the lipstick. So I'll grab a mirror and we'll do that. And that's literally just going to reflect that light coming down the side which is what we want and it just gives that little, I'll have to add this in post-production because we kind of do it all in one go because I need to get that uh, really close. Now if I had another light, if I had a bigger space, I would set up a light and do that with another light which would be ideal but obviously we haven't so this is what we've got to work with. So the last thing to really do is to kind of highlight the colour of the lipstick. Now to do that I've actually made a homemade snoot because you can see I needed the point of light source really small just to hit the top of the lipstick so I'll just move this out of the way and we'll put that in place now this is going to take a couple of shots to get it exactly where I want it on top of the lipstick but once I do it's just going to make it stand out a little bit more this is the hybrid 360 for anybody who's interested one of the older lights but I'm still using it because it's still a great light to use 
All the links will be in the description also if you want to go and check those out. So we'll take a shot. This is going to be a little bit tricky to get the light exactly where, oh, look at that. Straight away. That was pure luck. I <laughs> put that in position and that's hit the top of the lipstick exactly where I want it. Now one of the happy little um, accidents that's happened in this is actually this light is creating a shadow, a triangular shadow off of the snoot that's sitting above the uh, the lipstick and I really like the look of that so I'm going to be leaving that in the image. That was purely a happy accident. So the next thing to do really is just to take a shot of the actual uh, lipstick cover because it's out of focus through the depth of field and then we'll combine that also in Photoshop. So that is a simple setup guys to create a really eye-catching look to this product which is really quite plain and boring using the 3D block prop set. So there you go, that was a simple setup. Now be sure to subscribe to the channel folks to see more videos using the block prop sets, which I will be producing using more vibrant colors in different setups using different products. So if you want to see those, be sure to subscribe and flick the notification bell so you can see when those are posted. And with that being said, thanks very much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. See you then.